Hello everybody and welcome to Organian's Puzzle Box. Uh, today in this tutorial we'll be going through making a stylized uh, environment, a very quick stylized environment in which I basically add, uh, add some textures to a mesh that we are going to subdivide in order to use uh, displacement maps in Substance Painter. We'll, we'll generate our mesh from Blender, we'll, pay, we'll put it into Substance Painter and then we're going to add a few uh, textures to it. In case you guys don't know, uh, basically um, Algorithmic or Photoshop or whoever, Adobe, Adobe, whoever it is nowadays, they release these um, new textures on the uh, Substance Source um, portal. Basically, they're all stylized textures, um, you know, ready to use in your project. And I think, uh, you know, environment building of this kind is actually quite achievable with these kind of textures for very, very easy results. So in less than 20 minutes, you can have a mesh of a, I don't know, imagine a dungeon corridor or something like that. You can just throw in these stylized textures in there, play a bit with the settings, add the displacement map in, and, and voila, you've got a lot of geometry in a scene that you can now use for concepting, maybe in Photoshop, where you, you take that render into Photoshop and you add your character in there. You've built yourself an environment that it probably takes less than two hours to build an entire environment by using some very basic meshes that are then subdivided and you add textures to them and you, you use displacement maps uh, you know, in the best possible way to get some really nice and clean results. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you do, please subscribe and uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get started. Right, so guys, um, we're going to start off in Blender to begin with. Uh, we want to basically create our uh, mesh um, that we're going to be using in Substance Painter. So basically for all of those you, of you who don't know, They've added quite a few assets to the Substance Source, uh, basically. They've added the um, all these stylized textures that you can see uh, over here right now. Uh, you know, we've got some stylized, stylized ash floor, um, you know, desert ground, and, and all sorts of things that you can bring in. And even though we may not have all the textures that we want, we can take a realistic looking texture and turn it into a stylized version of that in just a bit in Substance Paint, and I'll show you how to do that. But before we get there, we want to create our mesh over in Blender that we are going to use to basically, um, you know, um, uh, start using the displacement map. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to start off with a cube and then we'll just press tab on the keyboard to go into edit mode, select the face, uh, go into face mode by pressing free on the keyboard or pressing this button up here and then select the face that you want to keep, then control I on the keyboard to invert, select the other faces, press X on the keyboard and delete all the faces. Now we have this one here and we want to basically apply a, um, um, a subdivide on it. So right click and press subdivide. And once that's done, you can see that we now subdivide it into four pieces. We'll then go to um, modifiers and we'll add a mirror modifier, which uh, you can find over here. And then we'll activate all the, you know these three axes, basically, um, so that whatever we do on one side happens on the other as well. So with the mirror modifier added, uh, we'll just uh, press this arrow here to close it. And then we'll add another modifier, which is a subdivision surface modifier. And we'll put the viewport uh, number of subdivisions to two. Uh, once that's done, we'll add another subdivision so, um, surface modifier and we'll take that to two as well. So once we, we've done for both of these, we'll put the first one that we added to simple mode and we'll leave the other one to um, you know, the Kalmul, um Clark option. So once that's done, if you press tab on the keyboard and now you go, you basically are in object mode. If we go up here and press this button and we activate the wireframe, you can see how much we subdivide, subdivide the model. Um, so let's just deactivate the wireframe and go back into edit mode by pressing tab on the keyboard. Now with this done, uh, we'll go into edge mode by pressing two on the keyboard and then we'll select two edges and we'll move them around to see what happens. So that's not the edge, those are not the edges that we want to move. We'll select these other two here. Um, sorry, now these are the two on this side. So these are the edges that we want to move, basically. You can see it's affecting both the sides of the mesh. 
So we'll press E on the keyboard to extrude. Now, as we're extruding, if we press uh, middle mouse button, you can now see that it's extruding in the direction that you were moving your mouse to begin with. So we'll extrude it in you know this direction. Then we'll select these two edges and extrude them in um, you know the other direction again, pressing uh, middle mouse button. So we want to basically extend this into creating a uh, sort of a of a, of a, um, a corridor type of uh, texture, sort of type of um, you know setup. And then we'll select these edges over here on the sides, and we're just gonna go upwards like so. Um, I would definitely not press right click, uh, sorry, yeah, middle click, so we can bend them a little bit. And the reason for that is just to create a bit of a, you know, not to have it perfectly moving this way. If you want to move them around a little bit more, press G, and you know, you can, you can move them about just the way you want them to. Now this is basically our, it's a very small amount of, um, you know, geometry that we just added here. Now we could potentially uh, duplicate this if you want, um, just to create, uh, you know, a, a longer corridor or whatever, but for our intended purposes, we're just going to keep it this way. Um, also what we want to do is we want to add a bit more shape dynamic to it. So let's just say that in our stylized um, sort of scenario, or we'll just uh, I just use the cut tool by pressing key on the keyboard and just cutting around here. Now press enter to commit to that. So in, and let's say in our uh, in front of the purposes we want to add a sort of a brick uh, wall here and then over here we want to have stone and then over here we've got some pavement and some desert or something like that. I don't know. Just you know whatever whatever you want to do with it uh, based on where you can find the substance source or whatever textures you want to use. So uh, I've just added this slice here, which is fine. Um, I'm then going to add some more, you know, running across basically like so. Obviously this is not uh, doing, it's not having the, the intended effect. So what we need to do is we need to sort of go all the way down here and then pull it like that, which is fine. Oh, sorry about that. So pull it all the way to the ground and like so. Press enter. Again, haven't really, you know, we can probably select some of this and it's not a problem if we do because we do want to create a bit of, uh, you know, we want to create a bit of some bends, some, um, this is why we've added these elements. So we can basically, you know, play a little bit with the shape of this, create a bit more, uh, uh, you know, a bit more dynamic in the texture as we go along. So again, this is all up to you as to what you were intended purposes for this mesh uh, or you whatever you want a concept so yeah something like that I think it will be quite interesting you can probably pull this a bit more you see give it a bit more depth in the scene so that's fine uh, I think that will work now what we want to do is we want to apply all these modifiers that we've added and you know make them permanent uh, one thing that we could do is we could apply uh, press the apply button to get them all to, to register and, and you know fully uh, can I uh, become a part of this mesh? But what we can also do is go to um, object mode, press the object button over here, and then just say convert to mesh, and that's it. Now it's done basically, and you can see the wireframe. Now I'm, I'm not particularly fond of the wireframe itself, as in I don't think we have enough geometry. I think we could probably do with so, with a bit more geometry, but we can add another sub um, we can add another subdivision later on in, in the scene. So it doesn't you don't have to do this now. So depending on where you're going to use this mesh, if you're going to use it again in Blender, then you can add another subdivision modifier later to subdivide the mesh even further for for using a displace using a displacement to a, an even higher degree. But if you're not going to do this, if you're going to use it somewhere else, maybe where you cannot subdivide, then you may want to add extra geometry now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another subdivision surface, and you can, as you can see, um, basically this would have already add um, a lot more geometry. So once I press, you know, press tab, once I press apply here, um, modify snappy. Oh, sorry, not in edit modes. It has you have to be in object mode. So now you can see we potentially have too much, actually. So I'm just going to control Z and I am going to go to, I'm just going to leave it to one. I'm going to go to object mode, not edit mode. 
and just apply it. And yeah, I think now we have enough enough uh, polygons to work with with you know way way more than enough. But again, because we were doing these scenes specifically for concepting, um, you're gonna render an image. So I mean, you can you can also render you can also render um, a full on you know fully fledged. Um, um, animations and such with this, but it's going to be very costly, I would say. Right, okay, so now uh, what we want to do is we want to UV map this mesh very quickly. So the, in order for us to do that, we're just going to go into edit mode. We'll open another another uh, 3D viewport. One of them will going to take the turn into a UV editor. We're now in object mode, but we need to go into edit mode, press A on the keyboard. With have, make sure you have faces selected, so you can select all these faces. And now press the UV button here and just press unwrap. And basically once you do that, you will see how Blender will then calculate this entire mesh and, and UV unwrap it over here, right? So this is it. I mean, if you want a lot higher quality, you could even play with symmetry. Like we already had a symmetrical shape, so you could have had the left and the right to match. Or again, we're not going to go into UV unwrapping right now is there's no need for that but if you want to have a you know, a lot of texture resolution you could pr you could probably build yourself a modular scene here to have an even higher fidelity on this right okay so we're just going to press tab on the keyboard this is now we've been unwrapped so we can press tab to go back into object mode and we can close our uv editor it's fine so this is our uh, mesh and let me just try to right okay uh, sorry, I've just moved to um, right. Okay, now one last thing to do is go into edit mode, press A on the keyboard to have everything selected, go into mesh, and then uh, click the button where it says shading. We'll go on the option here, and then press the option uh, smooth faces. And now, if you go out of edit mode, you can see that the entire surface has now been smoothed out, so it looks nice. So the normals are displaying properly. So now we want to move in. We want to move our mesh over into Substance Painter, and I'm just gonna, you know, basically I'm gonna uh, export the mesh over. So we'll um, go over here into Blender. To, uh, you know, we've got this selected, the cube selected. We'll go to File, and then we're gonna press the Export button, and we'll export it as FBX. Now you can put this wherever you know, whatever you want. This file, it's not really a problem. I'm just gonna test corridor I'm gonna name it uh, make sure that in the export that you've got the option called selected objects selected <laughs> and then just press the export FVX and that should be it now I want to ex import our model into substance painter so I'm just gonna switch screens to my tablet and I'm just going to raise said tablet a little bit like that okay so I've got a better view on it and what we want to do now is so this is I've got substance as I said, substance source open here where you can get all these textures if you if you want to uh, you know you can go through here and, and pick whatever you want from the newly re uh, newly released assets so now I'm basically in substance painted I'm going to press file new and over here um, sorry not open project I want to say file new um, the, the, the workflow, we're going to leave it to metallic roughness. We'll go to 2K. I want to, I want to uh, work with 2K rather than 4K just for the, the sake of sp the speed of it. And then we'll go into, we'll make sure we're on OpenGL so we can use this easily in um, uh, Blender, for example. And then we'll select the mesh that we want to play with. And I have saved this into documents. Um, and it's this test corridor. Right, okay, so now I've got the mesh loaded, I'm gonna press OK, and this will basically bring our mesh in. And now that you can see, you can see the mesh in here, um, you know, it's quite quite okay, everything is fine. If you press F2, F3 on the keyboard, have a look at the UV map, that's also loaded correctly. So now we are in Substance Painter, we can now start adding some textures. So. The first, I've got my shelf over on my um, second screen over here. Um, this is this is the shelf basically with all the materials. So I'm gonna have a look at what type of materials I can drag in. Um, I would like us to, um, for example, start with this stylized desert ground. Um, so let me just switch monitors again. I'm just gonna drag that in. 
and this is basically it this is the texture well, let me just delete that layer so now I've got the texture in and you can see that the um, you know the, the tile is quite big so I'm just gonna you know the scale so I'm gonna put that to let's say six yeah six should be just fine for our intended purposes here um, we also uh, want to start you know want to activate the height so we'll click this button over here which is the shader settings we'll go down here where we've got displacement and tessellation enabled and we'll put 0 0.01 uh, actually we can potentially go for something like um, 0 0.03 yeah no no 0 0.03 is probably gonna be too much 0.02 I think is the sweet spot for this and we're gonna make sure that we have the subdivision mode by the uniform or edge length depending on you know whichever you want or whichever gives you the better results I'm just gonna go with uniform and I'm gonna increase the subdivision count to the maximum and you can already now see um, uh, basically our you know quality uh, our our height map basically in action Right, so I'm just going to close the shader setting and now I want to start adding some more textures to this, right? So let's add the walls, for example. Um, so for the walls, I'm going to use a stylized angle stones, which I'm sure you're going to see in one second once I drag it in. So I put it on top of the stylized rocky gra desert ground, so it's now covering that completely. And I don't know if you can notice, but the stylized rocky desert ground is seen through these bricks that we just added you can see that the height information so we don't really want that we want to not have that height information show for this texture so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select you know i've got my ankle stone selected i'm going to change the layer from base color to height and then over here i'm going to uh, change this option to replace and now you can see that the height has now been basically replaced so now we want to add a black mask to these bricks. Uh, we've, we can now basically paint in where we want the textures to start showing up. So I'm just going to increase the size of my brush to something like that. And you know we can, we can add these textures in. Now one of the problems that you can see over here is that we have this smooth out effect which is not gonna work in our favor. So what we want to do is we want to go over here and we want to look for um, the hardness and I'm gonna put that to the maximum. And now when I draw, you can see that it's literally bringing that in, yeah? Uh, which is exactly what we wanted. Um, let me just, uh, okay, uh, no, that's not it. Yeah, that's it. I always forget the commands on uh, when I use just the pen. Okay, so I'm just gonna drag this maybe about here and then maybe add well, actually, yeah, yeah, maybe about there. I'm just going to drag it around there. We don't have symmetry on, so we cannot paint on both sides at the same time. But anyway, yeah, okay. So I've just put I've put these walls in in there. You know, they look very rough. I know that, but we're just going to add a few more textures to try and tie this in. So um, I'm going to add the I'm going to add the rock, and I've got this one here that says Alien Rock and I'm gonna dra drop it on top of everything else. Um, and again, with the alien rock, you can see that the alien rock is not actually stylized to begin with. And we also have the height of the information from the other, from my previous um, uh, texture showing through. So I'm gonna do the same thing where I want this to replace the height. And then I am going to move on to base color, right click it, add a black mask yet again. So we want our alien rock, oh, Sorry about that. <laughs> there was an accident there. Right, so we want our alien rock to show up straight between the, um, you know, the, the ground and this sort of, this wall. Yeah. Okay, so let's just do something like that. Well, actually, we're just going to cover it. Okay. So now I've got some rock in there and it's supposed to, supposed to basically do a connection between the surfaces, right? That's basically what's supposed to happen. So one of the things that we can do now is we can then press X on the keyboard while we have the mask active. And that means that now we are painting out the, the layer. 
So then I'm going to turn the hardness all the way down. So because I want, I want to have a bit of a smooth sort of effect, you can see that if we do this right, you can just about trick the eye into thinking that these surfaces are combining in some way over here, right? And that's, I think that's the most important thing in order to get a better, a better sort of feel to all of this. Uh, something like that, okay. And we want to do the same thing perhaps up here. But basically, uh, we don't have a lot of, I mean, we, we can press X and just start painting in the alien rock to sort of, um, you know, break the, um, br break this texture uh, from the bricks, as you can see. But the height is still showing through, so I'm just going to go back to my height and make sure, yeah, there's already set up to replace, so I'm not really sure what's happening there. Um, it's definitely not something normal that I see. Uh, okay, this is weird. The alien rock should easily take over this. Um, I think. I think this is replacing that one as well, which is probably causing a problem. So we might want to move this to um, maybe dissolve. If I could find it. Let's just do a um, not disable, as that will bring other problems to our fold. Pass through, no. Normal. So you start replace that. Um, yeah, and we'll put this as replace. Still not doing it though. Oh, I know why. Sorry, this is this is me. So this remains as replace, and I select. I need to select the layer itself and move that to replace. I'm sure that's supposed to be the, the case. Um, yeah, this is a bit of an odd one. If everybody, anybody knows, it, give me an idea on that, please. That would be helpful. Um, I'm sure there's a way to do this very, very easily. I'm just not seeing it at the minute. Right. Okay. So we have. Um, we have now set up our um, our material. Now the, the uh, stylized, sorry, the alien rock is not exactly stylized, not like the rest of the scene. So what we can do, we can right click the alien rock itself. Let's just make sure we're on base color again. Right click it and then add a filter. And in the filter basically we can select this option here where it says, uh, you know, Math FX oil paint. So once we add that in and it loads, you'll see how this alien rock basically will turn quite stylized. So I'm sure you can see it in here, basically. Um, you know, this is, this is, um, this is it. Uh, we do have a problem as it's not replacing the textures it's supposed to be doing. So let me just go back into height. See height is already set up as replacing. Um, Right. This is a very odd one, I must say. What if we remove the mask? Yeah, the mask did all right. Add a black mask. And it's still not doing it. Very interesting. Add a paint. Place. No, still not doing it. Um, inverse subtract. No. So I'm not really getting the effect that I want, which is quite, which is not something that I was expecting. You see, if it was replacing, it should have just replaced that texture. Maybe I just don't have enough. Uh, but no, that wouldn't make any sense. You know, thinking that maybe I don't have any 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 height in the technical parameters, but I do, so that wouldn't be a pro uh, that wouldn't be a a, a problem. Um, yeah, very interesting, very interesting problem to have, I must say. Okay, so I've just added this texture over here now. Yeah. And you can see that it's pretty stylized um, compared to you know the, the rest of it. And we can play with the settings of this of this um, matte effects oil paint as much as we want. You know we can we can add more strokes to it to make it look more comic-y. 
um, we can go in here and play with the strokes, the highlights and everything else to basically give it a more of a, of a stylized look. And you can do this for any texture that you want. Uh, uh, trust me, this, this filter basically works on everything. As long as you do the right combination of, of uh, settings to it, you will get a proper, proper effect on it. Right, so moving forward then, we want to do something with this ground. So the same thing, I'm just going to drop another texture in there. And this time around, I'm just going to bring some stylized um, rocks. And basically, this is the effect. Again, I'm going to add a black mask and I'm going to start painting it, painting it through in the middle here. Uh, so like a more like a pathway sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so I think that works well, you know, and you can see the height as well. Now, one of the things to make the height really pop out is to basically activate shadows in this display setting. So once we press this button over here to activate shadows, you can see how the whole scene sort of changes because of this. So it adds a lot more depth to the whole to the whole scene. Um, and again, you can play with the shadows as to what sort of um, uh, computation mode you want and, and how hard the shadows need to be. So for a more stylized look, you don't want to have very hard shadows, um, but you can definitely, you know, um, play with it until you get the right um, effect. So I think I think this will do for what, what we're trying to achieve here. I'm just going to close the view settings and, and also I'm going to press the um, render button basically. So this is our these are our settings basically. This is this is what we what sort of effect we have in Substance Painter by going into render mode. I've just let it render for a bit so we can get a good result here. Uh, you know you can clearly see how the um, you know the, the displacement is being shown. This is just an example. I mean you could play with the um, different uh, color maps and environment maps by just you know changing the presets and so on, or loading your own HDRI maps in it. Uh, and you can have the HDRI display as well. So for example, you can load an HDRI that would make sense in your scene, that would make sense for whatever project you have. Maybe if you want to add a sky or whatever whatever you maybe you painted in Photoshop or and so on, but you can add it in and, and that would give you the sort of the colors that you want from the environment basically being um, put into this scene. Um, so I think, um, the possibilities with this are quite extensive. You know, the more I use this, the more I realize how you can become incredibly creative with some of this. You set up your whole scene and then you flip that button for displacement and it just gives that extra amount of, of um, you know, of, of uh, detail and geometry. And the reason why I think this works very well with stylized textures is because when you do a piece, maybe you, you want to do a stylized character in, in an environment, rather than starting from scratch, I think it, it's worth having a workflow like this in place for certain types of, of, uh, of um, scenes and certain types of situations. I think it works very well. And I think it can be done for a multitude of applications. And you could take these, uh, you know, these textures. You could export them out of Substance Painter, and you can go back into Blender and put them in. And you can act, flip the switch, a switch in there with displacement map, you know, on displacement maps. And then you can you can uh, have almost the same uh, sort of effect as you have in here. Uh, if you guys are interested in seeing me using, uh, you know, setting up displacement maps in Blender with, with something like this or anything really in terms of displacement maps, please let me know in the comments section below and I will basically, um, you know, make a, a quick tutorial how to set up displacement maps in Blender. Well, I, I was planning on doing that in the future anyway, but if you want to see it as my next video, please let me know. I'll definitely put that in because I know setting up displacement maps in Blender is a quite a pain. And I know there's a few um, uh, tutorials out there on how to do this, but to be honest, uh, I find that they're like 10 minute videos, not really showcasing what I wanted to see and how I can, you know, I, I'm not really seeing a solution to the many, many problems that can uh, show up when you are using this placement maps. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, please stay tuned for the next one. Uh, if you uh, found this video useful, if you found if you learned something, please uh, let me know. Please leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the in my next tutorial. So thank you guys for watching and uh, take care. Thank you.